Hi, I'm Belinda Carley, the Director of the Institute of Personal Care Science, and today I'm going to introduce you to two different types of materials that can help you create some beautifully clear and natural based oily gels. Let me show you how. So here are examples of the products that you can make using these materials. Here they are in some larger containers. I just wanna point out a couple of things. First of all, you can see there's absolutely no oil coming out of any of these samples. So they're very, very stable. This particular sample here, I've even been storing in a incubator set at 55 degrees. You can see it's very stable. Uh, it's extremely clear. You can see straight through this product. Uh, and this is it here on this watch glass. You can add scrubby particles to it, like I have in this example. You can use another material I have here. I've added some glitter particles to it. Here is the actual product here. And what's great about this material, it's actually sprayable and very, very spreadable, yet it doesn't run from the watch glass. And of course, because it's very capable of suspending scrubby particles or glitter particles, it can also suspend color. So over here, I have an example of a lip gloss product, which again, you can see applies easily, spreads well. But one of the great things about this particular material too, is it doesn't bleed around cracks on the lips. So you get that great lip gloss coverage and color, but as you can see, it doesn't run, which means you don't get any bleeding of lip gloss around even wrinkled lips. So I'm going to start by showing you how to make these very natural products. Now, this is all plant origin materials. It is certifiable with EcoCert and Cosmos, and it will make these products here. Of course, you can add glitter, you can add pigment to these bases. I've just got some example formulas for you, making a nice clear uh, oily gel uh, and making one suspending some scrubby particles, but you can also add glitters or pigments. That's fine to do as well. The choice is yours. Now to make this, we need to start with a material called Sapper Gel Q. It does need to be mixed and processed in a very particular way to yield these very stable and clear end products. So I'm going to talk you through making the samples. In uh, larger production batches, you follow a similar sort of method, but you can obviously add in slightly larger proportions. What's really important with this material is that we start by adding the oils to the material very slowly at first, and you'll see me do that in a moment. And then we mix it until we get a nice, glossy looking product in between. Now, when I start, you'll see it starts looking quite milky to begin with, and by the time we get to the end of it, we have got this beautiful clear end product. Now, when I'm making this in the lab, you will see me mixing it, adjusting the height of the propeller stirrer so that I'm getting a lot of shear through the product. When you've got a larger production batch, you don't have to worry so much about air being introduced. You'll see my lab sample, air does get introduced into this product, but it does settle out over time. As you can see, there's not a lot of air in that product, a nice clear oily gel instead. But again, really essential when using this material to get the results you're looking for, and you can see them here, is to add the initial stages of the oil phase very slowly and wait for the product to stabilize before adding more. And as you can see, we've created that beautiful, clear, oily gel. Now, one of the other great things about this material as either the oily gel or the scrub version is you can apply it
and then with a little bit of water it turns to a micro emulsion or milky product that can simply be washed away. Now the next two products I'm going to show you use a very special material called oil chemia. Now this is about 70% naturally derived material. There is a synthetic component to it, but as I showed you, it helps you create sprayable oily gels. And of course, it's still got the versatility to hold pigments, which means it also helps stabilize sunscreen materials really effectively and even sprayable sunscreen products. So let me show you how we process this one. Now we do need heat, so what I have here is my caprylic capric triglycerides. You can of course use other oily substances uh, and I'm just heating this up now and to this I'm going to add my oil chemia. Now you can just barely see it there. We need to heat this quite hot to melt the oil chemia and mix it into that oily phase. And then once I've mixed that, I'll remove it from the heat and I'll add my oils that are oxidizable. Now you don't have to use oxidizable oils, but if you have a special uh, plant oil or combination or story you want to tell, add these after you've removed it from the heat and they'll mix in really easily. Now once that starts to cool, it will start to increase its viscosity. Right now you can see it's, it's quite low viscosity and flowing really well, but it will set to this consistency by the next day. So we just need to allow this to cool a little and then we can add our other oils, essential oils, antioxidant, what you're using for your product story. Give that a stir through. And we just need to wait for that to get just a little bit more viscosity before we add our glitter, scrub or pigment materials. And of course, by the next day, it will set to be this very stable oily gel product. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video being introduced to those two materials that make your formulating of oily gels using natural base materials so much easier. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please leave any questions or comments below and please subscribe to receive notifications about all our videos. Happy formulating.